Hello. This is the first uh, video lecture about project portfolio management. And in this lecture we are going to explain what project portfolio management is. We take a firm level view. Uh, we also explain the concepts of project management office PMO, strategy and program. Project portfolio management is uh, about decision making. Decision making on project, selecting them, prioritizing them, and uh, uh, deciding about whether to continue to uh, put resources uh, in which projects and so on. Uh, my uh, advice you to is uh, uh, to you is uh, uh, not to consider actually project management as a decision making only because projects themselves uh, are expected to make value and they must be actively management managed throughout the project life cycle. So projects are not necessarily about decision making. It is not enough uh, to just to pick. Uh, a promising project uh, uh, where we have calculated um, mm, significant net present value and uh, we have established a budget and uh, schedule and so on. Uh, project management is not about that. It is not about making decisions about projects. It is about active management of the project and making changes and uh, making the project really to change the future and uh, uh, bring wonderful uh, results. However, now when we are uh, looking at uh, project portfolios and uh, we are uh, looking at the selection of uh, projects and prioritizing them from an upper management uh, viewpoint, we are more or less into making decisions, prioritizing, reprioritizing and uh, kind of a selecting the good projects, uh, maybe uh, abandoning uh, the bad projects, maybe p putting something on hold and so on. And uh, when we now continue uh, this lecture, I would advise you uh, to think more or less about uh, internal development projects. That is product development or internal process development in a company. These methods and these management approaches that we are going to explain uh, are applicable to any kinds of projects and their portfolios like customer delivery projects. But I think that it is now better to consider uh, in, uh, projects that are internal to the company so that we can freely uh, uh, think about uh, uh, killing them about putting them on hold, about putting more resources on them, and so on, as we are not uh, constrained by external customer contracts necessarily. Then we can later on relax uh, this assumption and we can uh, also think about uh, how management of portfolios takes place in uh, customer delivery projects, for example, with uh, external uh, customers uh, uh, requesting uh, the uh, agreed outputs and so on. Okay, what is project portfolio management? First, here is the definition of uh, project portfolio. It's a collection of projects that uh, uh, are carried out in the same company and uh, therefore, uh, the projects use the same uh, uh, resources, the resources of the company, and in a way, they are under the umbrella of the company's uh, strategy. So uh, they also share, in a way, the same strategic objectives. What is project portfolio management then? In this picture, there are actually two definitions. Uh, the first one uh, says that uh, it's uh, 
uh, art and science of applying a set of knowledge, skills, tools and techniques to a collection of projects that uh, uh, is, helps to meet or exceed uh, uh, the needs and expectations of an organization's investment strategy. Well, strategy in general, but uh, we must remember that uh, we have here, when we are making decisions, um, a perspective of uh, investing in projects, kind of uh, putting more resources in projects and therefore expecting uh, rewards from those. Uh, the second uh, definition uh, emphasizes uh, the nature in project portfolio management uh, of uh, being about decision making, prioritizing, uh, reprioritizing uh, the projects and uh, uh, manage, management of uh, the projects at the aggregate level. So management the whole portfolio, not only single uh, projects. Okay. Now, program. I just wanted to take this uh, program definition up because program also is an entity that consists of multiple interrelated projects. Uh, but the uh, program's projects are contributing to the program's common goal. A program is a kind of a large project uh, in a way. Uh, and uh, the project has a start and an end, a predefined goal and uh, reserved budget for its uh, execution as, for example, any project has. But the uh, uh, characteristic of a, a program is that uh, uh, the uh, goal cannot be uh, defined uh, uh, at the very detailed level uh, at the outset. And therefore, uh, the program's projects cannot be necessarily known when the project the program starts. But uh, the projects are uh, defined uh, and uh, initiated uh, uh, during the program as the program unfolds. And al also the program's goal really can be uh, defined at the, uh, uh, like a mission, for example, uh, taking a man in the moon uh, could be a big mission of a program and we don't know yet uh, what kind of a projects we do need to uh, make this come true. Well, back to uh, project portfolios. So here is a picture from our project business book about a matrix organization. There is a firm's organization and uh, there are um, functions like sales and marketing, production, customer service, development departments in a way. And then uh, we have projects that uh, are in a matrix setting across those uh, departments or functions. And uh, there uh, might be then also a manager of uh, project managers uh, at the portfolio level. So there can be a separate manager of project managers uh, at the same level as the function managers are, or then uh, there could be a board uh, among those function managers that uh, are making decisions about uh, projects that uh, cut across uh, the organizational boundaries of those functions. So in a way, uh, a typical matrix organization also can be seen as a organization with uh, includes a portfolio of projects. Well, what is a project uh, management office, PMO? Typically, it is considered as a uh, organizational unit that has a staff function and uh, it is designed uh, or the tasks of the organizational function is uh, to uh, support um, uh, project management practices, uh, maybe develop project management tools, uh, help uh, uh, 
uh, project management development and tr training in the organization and so forth. But also to uh, uh, prepare for the project uh, portfolio board meetings and support the collection of information that is needed for project portfolio management decision making uh, and uh, uh, look how projects are managed and uh, also maybe require some kinds of standard methods and practices that uh, are used in projects in the company. Well, there can be uh, uh, several levels of project portfolio boards and several uh, uh, project management offices at several uh, different uh, levels. And uh, uh, in this picture, the uh, projects are marked as uh, arrows. And uh, you can also see that there are uh, projects at the higher level at the organization, which might be very strategic and uh, uh, crossing the whole organization. However, these projects also require resources from the top bottom of uh, the project organization. So uh, their resources and resourcing must be taken into account uh, when making decisions uh, in, about projects in por portfolio boards. Okay, <clears throat> uh, there are some uh, functions, uh, typical functions of project management office. And uh, for example, managing practices or development and maintaining project management tools, standards and processes is a very typical function. Uh, reporting project statuses, uh, monitoring and controlling, and then uh, at the very bottom of this picture, there's evaluating, analyzing, and choosing projects. So, um, project uh, management office and uh, the people there. There can only be maybe few people that are supporting uh, the organization's project management activities uh, can take part of managing uh, to one or more portfolios and. Uh, make preparations for project portfolio board meetings and uh, an inherent decision making. Well, here is a picture of two business units in a company uh, where uh, there are cross organizational processes at the strategy, portfolio and project levels. Uh, you also can see that there are uh, portfolios of projects of different types, product development, technology development, business process development, and so on. However, you can also consider this a picture of two separate firms, like a supplier and customer firm, that might want to align their uh, development projects. For example, product, product development projects or uh, mutual project development projects, uh, so that uh, they are in sync or they are uh, developed in a coordinated manner. Or that, uh, for example, two business units or two companies don't do the same development uh, uh, in parallel because it might be enough if only one uh, unit did that and uh, then the results can be used uh, uh, by another unit if coordinated at the portfolio level properly. Well, um, now when I have this picture on, uh, I would uh, ask you what is actually strategy? Well, in general strategy is defined about choosing the means uh, to achieve the predefined business goals of the firm. And projects are uh, used uh, as such means for business goal achievement. So this is the kind of a mindset also when we are talking about uh, uh, running a portfolio of projects in a company or organization. Well, um, this project portfolio management process is from uh, Aker and Kazemchades. Uh, um, article uh, 
actually it is uh, adapted from that and uh, modified from from their model uh, and uh, the important uh, message here is that we want to see uh, when we are talking about project portfolio management the company uh, in three distinct uh, levels so at the top there is the strategic level company level strategic business unit level and uh, uh, the, that is where the executives are then there is the portfolio level it is a, a level of departments functions and that is where typically middle managers are and then there is a project level uh, operations job shop and uh, that is where the project managers uh, and project teams are <clears throat> okay um, the idea here uh, is that uh, finding new opportunities uh, and new project uh, proposals can come from uh, any level and uh, there is also a link uh, to strategy so that the strategy kind of sets uh, maybe boundaries or directs uh, the finding of uh, new projects uh, then the process continues uh, by evaluating single projects then modeling the portfolio and evaluating the portfolio and then finally at the portfolio level making portfolio decision and I would emphasize now here that uh, it is a portfolio decision it always comes uh, to affect a project or projects but uh, the reasoning for why that decision is made is based on the portfolio so we try to maximize the value of the whole portfolio and not necessarily uh, a single project or, a, uh, or, or all projects separately uh, we try to balance the portfolio by uh, not having uh, all projects in the same product area for example if we are in a product uh, development uh, we are also balancing uh, the portfolio of not having uh, too many uh, high reward high risk projects and so on so it is not necessarily a single project's fault if the project gets killed or put on hold for example or if other some other projects are prioritized and uh, if some other projects uh, receive the company's resources because the decision is a portfolio decision then uh, the decision affects the project we come to the project level and there is definitely a project de uh, a decision that follows or that is included in the portfolio decision and then again this process continues of evaluating single projects and uh, modeling portfolios and making portfolio decisions my question to you would be the following um, what if a project is not aligned with strategy what kind of a decision or reasoning should be made at the portfolio level then should the project be killed maybe put on hold not yet to be advanced or uh, should the project be continue as a very promising uh, project that uh, even can renew strategy of course we would first think that okay the project that doesn't fit uh, the strategy uh, should maybe be uh, abundant uh, but there might be really uh, a big promise of uh, renewing uh, the company in the project and then my another question is that should uh, the upper level executives only make 
uh, portfolio reviews and make portfolio decisions and should they let the lower level people in their organization uh, to manage the projects. This is what many project portfolio management uh, texts suggest uh, that uh, top level managers shouldn't be involved too much in nibbling with uh, uh, single projects. But uh, on the other hand, it is the projects that change, for example, the company's future. And if there is really an important strategic project, so it might be very much justified that uh, some top executive comes uh, to work on that project and uh, becomes a kind of a project worker even and takes uh, a lead to uh, make uh, a new future for the company. Maybe a disadvantage of this is that the uh, uh, top executives start uh, uh, focusing on uh, very detailed things maybe, but are projects detailed? Uh, and uh, uh, another uh, potential uh, disadvantage would be that uh, that pet project of that executive that comes to put his effort, uh, his or her effort on that uh, uh, would receive more attention and more resources maybe than other projects. Okay, but is that only a disadvantage? Can that be really an advantage uh, based on what I just said about uh, making the company's uh, great future to happen? This picture then comes down to the project level and uh, shows um, a project uh, process as a stage gate or phase review process. So there are phases where certain things are developed and then there are decision making points which are gates or review points or milestones if you like. And important decisions uh, take place in those gates. So what happens in gates? There are uh, four alternatives about uh, decisions to make at each gate. So a decision can be made uh, to go to the next phase. Okay, the previous phase was completed uh, uh, in an appropriate manner and we can go on and there is still a big promise from this project and uh, it is beneficial to go on. Two, return to previous phase. So we are not yet sure whether we sh should continue. We must uh, maybe still work on the previous phase and make some uh, details uh, uh, more clear and uh, find out some more information or, or something like that. Or Three, put the project on hold. So not yet further progress. This is not a very easy decision. Normally it is much more easier for uh, decision makers to decide on whether the project is uh, continued or killed and so on for good. But uh, to put on hold is somewhere in the middle. Not yet. And uh, number four, you can kill the project as a non-beneficial or uh, not justified project for this company. Okay, in this uh, video lecture we looked about what project portfolio management is and this final last picture uh, brought us down to the project level and what happens at the project level when uh, portfolio decisions kind of a hit or meet uh, the project. Thank you for being with me in this uh, uh, lecture and uh, let's continue with uh, some other lectures about project portfolio management. I hope that this lecture set the kind of a foundation for the idea of project portfolio management and what it 
actually is. Thank you very much for being with me. See you in the next lecture. Bye.